Today we're making a three-in-one table saw jig, a tapering jig, a joiner jig, and in a pinch, a crosscut jig. What's going on guys? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today I wanted to show you how I made this super simplistic tapering jig for the table saw. A few videos back we did a corner unit dry bar with a built-in wine fridge and to top it we used this fake barn wood. Now I needed to cut tapers on both sides of what used to be a rectangular piece and to do that of course I had to make a tapering jig. There's two main types of jigs that I've found. There's this type, I don't know what you call it, but there's this type. Um, essentially there'd be a hinge down here with these two boards and a locking mechanism of some sort up here. You adjust this to whatever the angle is that you want, and when you tighten it down, you can run this against the saw fence, thus cutting the board at an angle. Now the issue I have with this type is that when I need to put an angle on the other side, well, I think the only way to do it would be to flip the board over, which of course I could run into issues with tear out and such things, and I'd be running the face against the table saw, which maybe isn't too desirable. So I skipped on this design. The second design would be something more like this, an actual sled. And there with the problem I found is that a lot of them, they come in different sizes and shapes, but essentially they all use the same system with a longer fence on the sled itself. A lot of times they'll have multiple slots. The fence system will have multiple slots. A lot of them had hardware and stuff that I would have had to order. And if you guys have been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that I try to use stuff that I already have in shop. And so that's what I did. I also wanted to come up with something that might help you guys in the sense of it being very simplistic. And I think we nailed all that criteria in one. So before we jump into the build, I do have a couple of things to mention. One is that we actually have a template for this jig. It's just a hand drawing that I drew up, but it has all the dimensions and materials and everything you're gonna need for this exact same build that I have here if you choose to make one. This is a free download on the website at inspirewoodcraft.com. A few of you guys have reached out about stickers and we're happy to announce that we do have a batch of stickers online now as well. And the other thing is we actually set up a new page on the website that's for donations. Uh, since the beginning of this channel, I thought it would be really cool as if we actually got a decent subscriber following that we could help support other donations that we would like to contribute to. Now, a dear friend of ours has recently been diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. And so our first fundraising attempt is to try and help her and her family out with that process as they go through that. So again, if you head to the website, if you're so inclined, there is a donate tab there. 100% of those funds will go to that family uh, until they don't need the funds anymore. So that being said, thanks for hearing me out on all that. Let's jump into the build of this tapering jig. Now, just as a reminder, links to some of our other videos and items we used in this video can be found in the description box down below. Here you'll also find links to other stuff like Patreon, where you can help support this channel so we can keep making awesome content, as well as where to find us on social media, our website, and contact info. Now this whole jig consists of a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I happen to have a two foot by four foot section laying around and so that's what I took out of this. Our overall dimensions for the sled is 16 inches wide by 36 inches long. Of course you could adjust that based on your table saw and what you might need. The fence system is five inches by 12 inches long. Now after I had the pieces cut, I would go through and find the center of the fence and I would drill a quarter inch hole right in the center of that. Then I'd find the center of the length of the sled portion, and that is where I'm going to route my slot for the bolt to travel back and forth in. I set my router bit at 5 16ths of an inch deep, and I used a half inch router bit to route out the bottom side of the sled. This is gonna be where the head of the bolt is, so later on I would have to come in and widen that out. But the first step was to get this center line established because next I would come through with a quarter inch bit and route out the actual slot for the threaded part of the bolt to travel in. Once everything was good and the bolt slid freely, I would come through with some 220 and an orbital sander and just sand down all the surfaces and I kind of broke the edges on it just to make it a little more manageable. And then I could move on to installing the toggle clamps. Now to establish the area, I would put the clamp portion itself as far back as it would go towards the handle. So that worst case scenario, I could clamp something very close to the edge. It ends up being an inch from the ends and about five eighths of an inch from the inside. 
And as far as the build, that's literally as easy as it gets. I'm using a quarter 20 by inch and a half carriage bolt and a tapped plastic handle. Now I already had these handles laying around, which is why I chose this hardware. You could probably use uh, toilet flange bolts and stuff like that as well, if that's what you have in your shop. You can see the versatility of this thing. You can spin this thing in all directions for a variety of different uses, some of which I probably haven't discovered yet. So for a generic taper, as you can see, I'm just going to put a double taper on this. I'm gonna line up my center mark and I'm gonna line up the very edge of the board along where the saw path is going to be. I can slide that fence up to it, tighten down the knob, and then lock the clamps down. And as you can see, it works like a normal tapering jig. But what's really cool is now if I need to taper the other side, I can adjust that fence out of the way, get my marks lined back up again, slide the fence back up against the piece, clamp it down just like we did before, and run the other side. And now I have a perfect pie-shaped double taper. And you can see how accurate it is I was able to actually cut and leave the pencil mark on it. This would also work really good for a joiner jig. Say you had a slab or something that had a real rough edge and you don't have a joiner. Sometimes it's just easier to do it on the table saw so you could very easily set it up for that. And because the fence is short enough, you could actually use it to cut 45. So say you had a piece of plywood or even a picture frame or something. As long as you had the table saw dialed in, make sure your fence is square with your table and your blade and make sure you use a proper square to get that 45 you're going to be able to get nice, perfect 45 degree cuts on this sled. I don't see myself using it for this, but you could also use it as a cross-cut sled. Again, because this fence is short, you're able to put it perpendicular to the cut path and then you can use it as a cross-cut device as well. And for those interested, it is 11 inches from the edge of the clamping fence to the blade itself, which means you should be able to get pretty wide pieces in there with it at this 16 inch dimension. If you needed to cut a wider piece, you could still clamp it on the board and just extend your table saw fence out, increasing your cut path. Pretty cool. I think there's a lot of features here. I think that there's probably some features I haven't discovered yet. If you make this, please let me know how it goes. Don't forget on the website, free download, all the dimensions, everything, the hardware placement, the holes, the groove, everything's written down on here for you guys. So head to the website, check that out, inspirewoodgraph.com. That's it for me on this one. Thank you so much for watching this video, as always, and we'll see you guys in the next video.